a bit of a bad habit. Can you tell what it is? <laughs> Occasionally, when I make a project and I finish everything on the inside and I'm so happy with how the interior looks, I don't finish the outside. And then of course the video's done and I'm so excited to move on to the next project. It goes and sits on my shelf like this. I don't know how long these have been sitting on my shelf, but um, it's time to finish them. I'm still kind of in that in-between state where I'm still working on some stuff with my family at home, and so I'm not really in the headspace to work on my major projects, but this is going to be a great in-between project to finish some things I probably should have finished in the first place. This is my Alice in Wonderland book nook, and this is my abandoned scene that I made in a collaboration with Abandoned Miniatures. I actually really love both of them, so the fact that the outsides are so bleh is kind of making me sad. And also this one I'm going to turn into a display for my table at the Dallas Miniature Show, and I want to actually display this one in, you know, where they kind of show projects that have been finished, so they really need this glow up. I will put both of these project videos in the description box below if you want to check out when I originally worked on them. But for now, let's get started. I think I know what I want to do for this one. This one I'm still thinking about. So let's get started on the abandoned attic scene outside. The inside's done. Let's do the outside. <laughs> First, I'm going to have to dust everything because nothing is going to stick to this cardboard if I leave this amount of dust on top of it. Then I'm going to remove all of the loose pieces on the inside so I make sure I don't lose anything on accident. All of these pieces were created in my original video and I hung these pictures. I am going to end up remaking this room a little bit. I do want to keep a lot of the original things inside of it, but I am going to cut down the pictures so I have a bit more space to work with when I redo everything. As I was removing the small pictures on the floor, my sleeve showed me just how dusty the floor was, and even though I'm okay with some dust, I did want to start with a clean slate, so I used my keyboard vacuum to clean it out. All of these ripped wallpaper pieces are attached to the floor permanently, so they're going to stay inside. I'm putting everything inside of a bucket off my desk so it's safe while I work on the exterior of the house. I am going to be doing siding, and recently I had someone ask why I paint everything black first, which is a great question. I paint it black first just in case I have any little gaps, or if I decide to make the siding askew, I want to make sure that it's black underneath so it looks like a hole and you don't see the bare cardboard. I'm going to be doing cereal box siding, which is what I did for my Adams Family dollhouse. I always love the effect that this has because it makes the project so colorful before I dull it down into an antiqued look. I cut my strips about 3 8 of an inch thick, and this is because they are going to overlap a bit, and I'm starting from the bottom and going up the side. I'm not worrying too much when I get to the very top because this is going to be kind of an awkward shape. I'm just going to keep adding siding and then once everything's dry I can cut it off with scissors and then get really close to the edge of the wall with some flush cutters. And I know people always think I say flush when I say that, but no, it's flush, F-L-U-S-H. After that's complete I'm adding some glue to the top to make sure the top edges are really stuck down to the cardboard. It took me a couple hours to complete this step, but once it's done, it's so colorful and, you know, just doing the colorful side outwards, well, it's for fun. To complete the corners, I cut some strips of white cardstock and folded it in half. This is going to cover up the edges and give the siding a really finished look. I'm going to do this on the inside corners as well. Once that's dry, I'm using my flush cutters once more to make sure that it's even at the top. I find this to be a really efficient, easy, and cheap way to make siding. It just takes a little bit of time and patience. So now I'm going to cover everything with Mod Podge. I was going to use my black Mod Podge, which is just Mod Podge mixed with black acrylic paint, and it was looking like this. So I realized that was not going to work. I actually kind of had a lot of fun cleaning out the jar, and then I remixed some new black Mod Podge to cover the outside. This mixture is going to make sure that my cereal box siding sticks to itself, not just on the inside where I added the glue when I applied it, but on the outside everything is one harmonious piece. 
and then adding in the black will block out my once beautiful bright cereal box finish, which I loved, but it has to go for the effect that I want. I laser cut some shingle strips from chipboard or cereal box material, and these are going to go on the roof of my little attic space. I didn't quite know how I was going to line these up because it isn't a perfectly rectangular space. I ended up just adding more space to the larger side so it just kind of angles out a little bit as I get closer to the center of the roof. Once I had both sides complete and glued down, I used another strip of cardstock that was folded in half and glued that over the ridge of the roof and let that dry in place. I clipped it off and then I could work on my little side roof. I really think this roof looks interesting, even though it's such a small piece, the roof angles are going in all different directions. On this little piece, I also added a strip of cardstock that just goes over the edge to give it a nice finish when you look at the front of the project. Now I'm going to add some leading. This is liquid leading from Gallery Glass. I have used this stuff for a long time. It is simultaneously good at getting into small cracks and also staying in place and keeping its shape. I'm using it along that edge and then underneath the roof crevices. I also wanted to add some texture to the surface of my shingles because they were looking very flat. So I'm using some Arteza outdoor paint. You can also use fabric paint for this, any paint that keeps its shape really well. And I'm using a really rough acid brush that's going to leave some prominent brush strokes in this paint. This is going to give me a bit more of a wood texture to make these look like wood shingles. Once it's dry, I'm hoping you can kind of see what I mean by it adding texture. It doesn't have to be a lot of texture, just a little bit to make it look more, I guess, less <laughs> like it was just cut from some cardboard. I am also going to be covering the shingles with a layer of Mod Podge to make sure everything is glued together and the texture that I created with the paintbrush still shows through, so I'm happy with that. So now that I have a black void of a project, let's add some color and finishes. I put a really quick coat of brown over the black and I'm adding some crackle medium on top of that. This Folk Art brand crackle is my absolute favorite. You put the color that you want to show through the cracks on first, and then you apply the clear crackle medium. Let that dry completely. And then finally, you can add your top coat, which is going to be the color of the siding. I'm adding this white, and you really want to go in the direction of the siding, and you really only have one, maybe two swipes to get the paint on there. It starts drying and cracking almost immediately. So if you're doing a lot of brush strokes back and forth, you could paint over the cracks. So you really have to concentrate, just add one stroke and make sure you have a lot of paint on your brush. And as you can see, it is already cracking. Here's how it looks completely over the entire project. I have missed using Crackle so much. I love it. I absolutely love cracked paint. And so this was a really fun project to do this on and get my Crackle fix. I realized I missed the green that I had put on the shingles, so I decided to do a bit of a darker green as the color for the roof, and I added kind of a dry brush over everything, and then I went back and did a more detailed paint on just a few shingles here and there. I think it gives a varied look to the roof without having to do different colors, kind of as if some of the shingles had been replaced at different times during the roof's life. I had never done this effect before, but I kind of like it and I think I'll do it again in the future. Then I had to very slowly and detailed paint around the window frame. I'm not going to paint the individual window shutters or the window panels, there we go, because they're very, very tiny and they're already painted a nice dark brown. So I'm just going to paint the outside and then touch it up with a little bit of white. Now you have to know I wasn't going to let this nice white paint get away without a little bit of aging. So I'm adding some watered down brown paint and I am adding way too much here. This is too much brown mixed in. It should have been a lot more watery. So I used some water to try and thin it out and get some off, but it was a little bit too late. So you will see that there's a difference between the walls and one wall is just a bit more brown than the others. I'm also adding some of this brown wash onto the roof. This will kind of make everything come together as one piece that's been sitting in the weather for a long time together. 
So as you can see, that larger wall is much lighter when it comes to the brown wash. And that's how I wish it all was, but that's okay. I'm just moving forward. We're just gonna have one really brown wall. After the brown wash dried completely, I could move on to some chalk pastel. I'm using the black chalk pastel to go along the corners and into the edges to really give that old roof and old siding look. This is going to be anywhere where water would have collected and possibly caused the wood to rot or get a little bit of mold on it. This means I'm also going to go around the edge of the window and then I'm also making one dark patch on this large wall because there's nothing really interesting on this wall so I just added a little bit more black chalk pastel over there. To seal all of this in, I'm using a matte sealer and I just had to cover up the window. I was hoping it wouldn't pull any paint off and it didn't. So I was very happy with that and overall happy with the entire piece, mostly, and ready to move on to the interior. Here I'm just showing you that the chalk pastel is no longer coming off because I want this to be a shop display for my store. It's important that if people pick it up and touch it, that nothing comes off on their hands. I used some brown paint to go around the edge of the opening and then I started thinking about the interior. I have been wanting to make this little table into a kit for my store for a while, so I decided to do that. I edited the pieces in my computer, ran it through my laser cutter, and tested the entire thing to make sure it went together really well. I'm not going to go through all the steps of how it goes together, but if you are interested in this kit, it will be available in my store starting uh, April 1st, I believe. That's my goal. And yeah, it's just a fun little table with a removable drawer. And then I just couldn't stop myself there. I really wanted some cardboard boxes for the attic and I'm always needing cardboard boxes for things. So I thought might as well make a cardboard box kit also. So I made one that cuts out of chipboard. It's super easy to put together and then you just have a cardboard box because who doesn't have a cardboard box in their attic or basement? To this kit, I also added a stencil, so it just kind of makes it a little bit more fun. You can stencil words and symbols on the boxes, and I used some masking tape to make it look like the boxes are taped up, even though they're actually glued together. These are going to fill up my attic really nicely. I'm going to put my table, and I'm so sorry they're shining with the brightness of the sun, <laughs> but because they are pure white, my camera gets really confused. And I'm just going to put some of my other shop kits in the space. And just like that, I have a much better way to display my kits on my table. I also thought about making an attic trunk, which I still want to do, but it just didn't get done in time. And then my brain ran out of kit making abilities. <laughs> so I decided to put that off to another time. But for now, my attic is complete. I am so much happier with the outside. It just brings such a smile to my face. And then I also wanted to add back in the photos as a a reminder of what this project started out as with my collaboration with Abandoned Miniatures. It still has that little photo that was my original inspiration for the entire space. I honestly can't wait to add more to this tiny little attic as time goes on. I am so happy with how the outside of this turned out. I do have a little bit of touch up to do around the bottom where the black is. I just realized that as I was starting to film. <laughs> so I still haven't completely finished the outside. Um, I think part of that is I didn't really know what to do with it. I have this huge urge to put moss and all sorts of stuff all over the roof to make it look really old and gunked up. However, However, because this is going to be a table display, I really want it to look nice in the long run of me going back and forth, moving it, maybe possibly people handling it, and I just don't know if the moss will hold up. So I'm making myself not do that. <laughs> so I am probably just going to clean up the black and call that done. So now that the outside is complete and I've revamped the inside so that it can be a display for my store, it is now time to work on the other project, which is going to be very different. <laughs> um, Alice in Wonderland is always a little bit different uh, because it's wacky and exciting and colorful and psychedelic. 
sometimes. So very different from my typical style that I love to go with here. So first things first, I'm gonna do a little shopping to find some materials that I don't normally keep in stock. Some red hearts perhaps, and I don't know, things that I associate with Alice in Wonderland. So let's do that. There are some generic, easy to find shapes that are great to associate with Alice in Wonderland. So this made looking for things pretty easy as long as I could find something with red hearts or something with flowers. It was not too hard. However, finding something specifically Alice in Wonderland, I, I couldn't find anything that was specific towards that genre. I did find these, uh, I was about to call them marshmallows, um, mushrooms, <laughs> but they are kind of puffy like marshmallows. They just didn't really fit the vibe, but I, I did think they were kind of cute. And then I found these flowers, which I did really like. I wanted some 3D flowers to put on the outside. And then I found that I could get one extra flower for the same price um, in this other bundle. So I grabbed that. And that was really all I found for my shopping haul. So I came home with four scrapbook papers and two little sets of embellishments. And then from my own craft supplies, I have this old box of cards that I've used every now and then. It is not a complete deck anymore. <laughs> um, it does have the red back, so that's good if I want to use that pattern. I have some of the small cards that I used on the inside of this project a long time ago. I found this chess piece just out in the open in a public area at one point. And I had this huge 3D printed Alice head that was a mistake print when we first started. We had no idea she was going to be this huge. So I've held on to that. I don't typically throw away my mistake prints unless it's just like a complete mess. And today that's coming in handy. I also have a ton of these little rooks, which are a great practice print for 3D printers. So I'm going to try and use one of those as well. Just like I started out the last project, I'm going to remove all the dust from the outside and I am going to get rid of all of this masking tape that is currently holding the wires in place. I don't know why I did it with masking tape, maybe so I could remove the wires later on if need be, but just doing the process of gluing them down made it look so, so much better. I am going to leave the switch loose on the top so I have access to it, but basically I'm going to build a wall around this space to enclose it. I did think because there were some lights on the outside I could have the lights shine through the hearts, but they have this silver backing and I tried to get it off with acetone and I could not, so we're not going to have any shining hearts. I think these 3D items are going to be great to nestle here and there within the walls. And I don't know if it makes sense in your head yet, but hopefully it will make sense in a moment. But I want it to kind of look like Wonderland is seeping through to the outside of the book nook. So there's going to be a few reveals that show these items. The only place I could really fit the Alice head was laying on her side at the top. And then I wanted one of the chess pieces kind of floating towards the back over here. So I'm making a little platform that I can glue on to make sure that I'm free from the wires. I don't want the wires in this area and to make sure I have enough space for the chess piece. I did realize that the rook took up less space than the knight, so I am going to be using the rook and the rook matches the piece on the inside. So I'm going to put the knight chess piece back and maybe use that for a future project. As I'm planning out the case that's going to go over this entire piece, I am trying to make sure that I don't have anything sticking out too far. This is supposed to be a book nook, so there are books that are going to be laid up against the outside. And because of this, I don't want anything sticking out that could possibly put indentions into the books or have the books break off things off of my project. So I'm trying to keep things fairly flat. Here you can see the idea of the walls encasing the original book nook. And as I was going along, I was cutting out little glimpses into the 3D pieces that I've inset on the inside and making sure everything's still very flat so it fits on the bookshelf. I'm also going to cover up the back part of this, but I'm not going to do that until a little further down in the project so I still have access to it. Once I was happy with the walls and the ceiling, I used my hot glue to glue them in place. 
I did have a few thoughts about this that I wasn't going to be able to reach the wires. So if I do ever have a mushroom light go out on the inside, it is going to be hard to fix it or possibly even impossible to do that. But that's kind of the risk I'm taking here. So now you can see everything is glued down. I did decide I wanted something on the outside of the opposite wall that I have my rook piece. There's honestly not a lot of room over there. It's a very tight squeeze. So the only thing I can embed is one of those cards. So I did find I still had a queen of diamonds card. And even though it's not the queen of hearts, I'm thinking I can stick some of those heart shapes over the diamonds and still get it to work. So I cut it out by using a piece of cardboard in there so I didn't accidentally cut my wires. I'm going to attach it to another piece of cardboard that I can slide inside. And just like that, I have another inset piece in the side of my project that doesn't have a lot of room uh, to have any like 3D objects in it. So I think it'll still add some interest on that side. I also added the back and left a little cubby for the switch so that I could pull it out, change the battery, and switch it on and off. So with that final wall, that completed my case for the outside of the book nook. Even though it does look like it has more bulk, it's still roughly the same height, depth, and width. It now just has four walls that cover everything. Because I wanted the Alice bust and the Rook to kind of look like they were inset into some kind of stone wall, I had to add some cardboard around the edges. I didn't want to fill it full of aluminum foil because there's all the wiring in there. And so adding little bits of cardboard as I went along filled in these gaps and it's going to make it so much easier to add some drywall compound later on. This is why I hadn't glued on the back yet. It was so much easier to add these cardboard pieces in with the back removed. Thankfully, I was able to find one more sheet of the scrapbook paper I use for wallpaper on the inside, and I found another piece that kind of matched its tone. I am going to be slicing these into long strips that are going to cover the outside. I want it to look very colorful, very Alice in Wonderland, and I couldn't figure out how to do it. I didn't want it to quite look like a patchwork quilt, so I went with stripes. And I'm trying to lay them out so it's very visually interesting, but also just very Alice. And I did find on this scrapbook paper that there were smaller roses on the back, so I decided to use the back of a scrapbook paper instead of the front. I was very apprehensive about these papers going together because a couple of them are very bright white and then the other ones are more of a yellow tone. So I was laying out everything first to double check that I thought it was going to work. And in the end, I do end up aging them just a little bit and I do like how they go together. But I do want you to know I was very much second guessing myself at this point and just had to make the decision to go for it because I really didn't have any other papers that I thought would work. As I glued these down, I was using my X-Acto knife to free the little areas, and I do plan to cover the edges with some faux stone, so I wasn't really worrying about a clean cut around the openings. I glued one piece at a time on both sides, the top and the back, and then made sure I had all of my cutouts, and then my paperwork was finished. This is how it's looking. I do like that I went with the stripes. I don't know if the vertical stripes would have been better, but the end result makes me happy, so I'm good with it. I need to now cover up the edges where you can see the cardboard connection. I have just a tiny bit of this wallpaper left, so I decided to try and wallpaper around the edge to make it look like the wallpaper goes all the way out and starts touching the paper on the outside of the project. This was a very delicate process of cutting it to make sure that it fit perfectly on the inside of my project and then gluing it down, trying not to mess up the paper, and then wrapping it around the outside. I did this for both sides of my project and I really do like how it ended up looking. Once I got around the edge, I added glue and then pressed it on top of my papers. And I do like that it has one strip of the wallpaper on the side to continue that look. 
Once I got both of the sides completed, I started adding that same wallpaper to the very top part of the project. And this is because it has to cover up that little strip of cardboard. And it just really makes everything look cohesive and like I had planned it to look like this from day one, which really I hadn't. I'm just trying to force the paper to fix all of the things for me. Just fix everything paper, <laughs> please. At this point, I was struck by how bright everything was, and also I was surprised by how much I liked it. <laughs> I really did not expect that. And I was also thinking it felt very Mary Inglebright. I think I'm saying her name correctly. Um, I am going to dull it down a little bit later on, but so far I'm happy with it. I decided to use some of this recycled material to try and make bricks. So I'm cutting into this. It's kind of like an egg carton material, but a little bit thicker. This is going to create stones that are outlining all of my openings and starting to make it look like a little bit of the Alice in Wonderland world is coming out through the book nook. This took a while to do, but I really enjoy making kind of a weird brick wall most of the time because you can really just have a lot of fun with it. To make all of these areas come together, I'm going to be using some Fast and Final. This is lightweight drywall spackling from DAP. And I really love this stuff. This is the same material that I use to make snow, but at this time it is going to hopefully come out looking like rock or like stone that has been carved away over time. I'm adding it in all the gaps between my 3D print and the cardboard. I'm using a brush with a little bit of water, and I mean just a little bit of water because I am dealing with a project that's made mostly out of cardboard and paper, and I don't want to add a ton of water that could cause things to warp or run. I'm adding this around Alice, and then of course in my little alcove where I'm going to be adding my rook. I'm not adding the rook yet because I want to make sure I can get back to the inside, but once that dries, I do glue it in off camera. I'm going to let everything dry, and once it is dry, I need to add some stone texture. I'm adding some sand and paint into some glue. The glue is going to really help the sand stay inside of the paint. I mixed it all together and I'm just going to brush this over everything, over the 3D print, over the spackling, and over the stones that I had previously glued on. This is going to give it a really cohesive look like it's all part of one building. I also wanted to feather out the edges a little bit past the bricks. I think this is going to make it look like it's emerging through the paper. At least that's the look I have in my mind. I had the two parts on the right side connecting and then just added a few little stones. Really, you want to add just some whimsy here and there. And then I felt like the edges needed something, so I dabbed some green paint around all the edges of the stone because I do know I want to add moss later on, and I think this will give everything a much more natural look, kind of like it's, it's growing a little bit, like a, a bit of a garden type feel. Now let's go to those roses that I had previously purchased. I started gluing them in the openings I had created in the book nook case. I do not want them to stick out too far, even though I would have loved to have put them all over that brick wall I just created, but this does risk them being ripped off, so they are just going to mostly be in the inset areas. I did add the little heart jewels onto the heart paper, just to give a little sparkle and interest to those pieces. And of course, I added the hearts onto the Queen of Diamonds card. I wonder if anyone's going to notice that there's also diamonds on there. I decided to leave those. Now, of course, we have to paint these roses red. If you've ever seen Alice in Wonderland, <laughs> you'll know what I'm talking about. So I got some Red Alert red paint, and I'm just adding it to part of the roses. And then I wanted to add some red drips coming down the gray wall. And I really do love how these drips came out. While I was doing this around the card initially, I was just testing it, and I really loved the red drips. It gives it this really... Um, kind of bloody look, even though it's not blood, but I think that's kind of the interesting part of Alice in Wonderland, which makes it kind of dark a little bit, is because, you know, the queen screams off with your head. And if you've ever seen the American McGee Alice in Wonderland, you know it is very dark. 
Now I know there are some people who have the need for speed, but I seem to have the passion to podge. And I just could not get Mod Podge out of my head. I couldn't decide whether it was a good idea or not to put Mod Podge all over this project, but I just could not fight that feeling anymore. I felt like it would really protect the paper and it would adhere the stones to the paper. So I covered everything with Mod Podge at this point, is also covering the flowers because the flowers are paper. And it just gave me more of a finished feel to the entire outside. Previously, I told you I was going to dull everything down, and I'm doing this with a brown wash over the stones, over the paper, over everything. This is a little bit of aging. It's not a ton of aging, but I do feel like it matches the tone of the papers together a little bit more, and it also gives a bit more variation to the color of the bricks, because right now they're just very gray and green, and I wanted some other earth tone mixed in there. On this one, I felt like I could add some moss because it's not going to be regularly handled. So I am adding some glue in the cracks and crevices between my stones and along with the embedded Alice sculpture. And then I can just sprinkle some greenery on top of that and let that take hold. I think this continues to go along with the garden theme and because this project was based off the American McGee version um, at the very first chapter of that video game, it is a beautiful green luscious garden with all sorts of flowers. It's really pretty so I'm glad I could add that in a little bit here especially because this whole book nook is Alice just stepping in to Wonderland. I also added some of the flowers inside. I previously didn't have any flowers, but I think this makes the interior very cohesive with the exterior. And I also added a little red gem onto the Queen of Hearts card that I previously used on the interior. It wasn't until I started on the editing process of this video that I realized that my Alice figure is broken. I don't know how I broke her, I don't know when I broke her, but her little ribbon on the top of her head has broken off. So I'm going to replace that with some actual ribbon. The previous one was painted red, but I just made a little white ribbon that is going to be a lot harder to break off, or at least easier to replace. And I'm going to snip off the 3D printed ribbon, and then I'm just going to paint that little area on her head black and glue my white ribbon in place. So now I feel like I've fixed up the inside a little bit like I did for the attic scene as well. Thankfully, the rest of her is in pretty good shape still. Now I can add Alice back into her scene and with her bow in place, she is fully ready to take on the dangers of Wonderland. One thing I didn't get done was order a new battery for the battery pack, so my mushrooms and my Cheshire Cat are a little bit dull. Before I put it on display this summer, I am going to make sure to replace that battery so it is nice and bright. Here's a final look of how everything came out. It can now be used as a book nook on my shelf, or it could also be displayed on its own. I feel like the outside holds up enough on its own now that it could just be a lone display with a long dark hallway that leads into Wonderland. And just when I think I'm done, I find one more thing I forgot to do. I am going to add this little strip of wood to cover up that bit of cardboard at the bottom. I promise I will do that. Well, that was a huge change from just a few days ago where these projects were bare cardboard on the outside. So hopefully I've learned my lesson and I will stop my bad habit of putting doing the outside off for so long. I am so happy with how these came out. I'm so excited that I can finally display these pieces without having to apologize for the outside and telling people just look on the inside, <laughs> ignore everything else. And I'm also so happy to have a new display for my sales table and it will be displayed, well both of these will be displayed for the first time at the Texas Miniature Showcase, which will be happening this summer. Thank you for following along. Let me know which one of these came out as your favorite. They're so different that it may be hard to choose or you may just really love one more than the other. Or maybe you had some other ideas or different ways that you think I could have finished it that might have looked even better. 
On a personal note, I did want to let you know that things are getting better around here. We're finding our new normal in the Bentley household, and I do feel like I'm getting close to being ready to work on my normal projects again, where I can put some more focus back on the Betelgeuse house, maybe even the Fairfield, and some other new projects that I have coming up. It has been great to be able to focus on some of these housekeeping things, I guess I would call it, during this time when I needed it. So I highly suggest if you are somewhat in a situation where I was, where you're just needing a break from the projects that are taking all your concentration, you can do things like organize or work on old projects that are mostly finished and really just need a few tweaks. I enjoyed that because I did not have to put my whole brain into the interiors of these. They were already done, maybe needed a few fixes, but I could just focus on the outside and really enjoy that part. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I will still be putting out videos, but they'll just kind of come out whenever I can. So make sure you have the notifications turned on. It is the bell right next to the subscribe button. That lets you know whenever I post, even if it's not a Friday, it could be a Monday, it could be a Thursday. You never know, but if you want to make sure that you're there, make sure you have notifications on. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. What are you telling me? What are you doing? Oh, is that yours? Are you plugged in? Yes. I don't know what your problem is then. I'm going get it. Oh. What you doing? Oh my gosh. And I revamped the inside to be. <coughs> You're being distracting. All right. And now it's time for lunch.